Ever wondered what the difference between endo and phytocannabinoids is? Well, look no further. Cannabinoids are a class of diverse chemical compounds that act on cannabinoid receptors located in what's called the endocannabinoid system. Now, the endocannabinoid system, or ECS, is found in humans as well as mammals, fish, and even birds. Also, some invertebrates such as sea urchins and nematodes. Now, there's a surprising amount of information that we don't know about the ECS, but what we do know is that it plays an important role in multiple aspects of neural functions, including the control of movement and motor coordination, learning and memory, emotion and motivation, addictive-like behavior, and pain modulation. Now, there are three types of cannabinoid classes that act on these endocannabinoid receptors. Phytocannabinoids, endocannabinoids, and synthetic cannabinoids. Let's start with phytocannabinoids. Now, phytocannabinoids, phyto meaning plant, are cannabinoids that are present in, you guessed it, plants. They can be found in the stalks, leaves, flowers, and seeds of the plant. This is basically everything we love about cannabis. THC, CBD, CBN, CBG, THCV, and the list goes on. Now, endocannabinoids, endo meaning inside, are cannabinoids produced within the body and serve as intercellular messengers. Scientists believe that these cannabinoids are synthesized on demand rather than stored for later use, which may be why the endocannabinoid system is linked to the regulation of so many functions within the body. For example, you know that runner's high that you get after a long workout? Well, it was initially thought to be due to the release of endorphins. However, researchers now believe that an intense run stimulates the endocannabinoid system to produce anandamide, also called the bliss molecule, and two arachidona glycer, this one. Finally, synthetic cannabinoids are cannabinoids that are not naturally occurring, but instead created in a laboratory to mimic phytocannabinoids. Now, though synthetic cannabinoids kind of get a bad rep, such as the chemicals used in K2 and Spice, there are actually medications with synthetic cannabinoids that are prescribed. For example, Navalone, also known as Sesamid, is prescribed for chemotherapy-induced nausea and acts in a very similar way to THC. One thing to note is that phytocannabinoids and synthetic cannabinoids are capable of producing intoxication, which endocannabinoids alone cannot do. Now, endocannabinoids and phytocannabinoids aren't necessarily different in terms of interactions, as they both activate the body's ECS by binding to cannabinoid receptors but they do differ in how the ECS reacts to them. On one hand, endocannabinoids activate a homeostatic effect, bringing the body to a balanced state of health, whereas phytocannabinoids can be beneficial if the body's homeostasis is disrupted due to an imbalance. Think of phytocannabinoids as supplemental to the ECS. Our body doesn't produce them naturally, nor is it made for them. But despite this, phytocannabinoids can and do imitate endocannabinoids, but they also do other things like get you high as a kite. This supplemental function of phytocannabinoids is both interesting and advantageous. The endocannabinoid system is vital to so many functions within the body, and phytocannabinoids like THC and CBD can impact this greatly. This is why we're seeing so much research about the potential medical applications of cannabis, and also why there's still so much more to be discovered about this plant. We've barely scratched the surface of what all the phytocannabinoids in cannabis can do, and it's extremely exciting what breakthroughs we're going to see in the coming years. And with that, thank you guys so much for watching my video. If you have any comments or suggestions, please drop them below. Have a good one.